Donald Trump in New Hampshire, this guy's coasting right now. I mean, he's sweating uh, quite a bit. He, he addressed it. He was like, I'm so wet. I'm so wet. They're going to say I'm wrong, but it's 104 degrees. There's no air conditioning. But he was like, you know, should I do the debate? Like, why would I? I'm a 50 points up. Why would I do it? Why would I do it? Um, but if he was zero points up, he would still probably wouldn't do it. Well, maybe yeah, he would, actually. I don't yeah. know. He would, I don't yeah, know. actually, it would be good for I him. think he would do it, yeah. Here is uh, Donald Trump up in uh, New Hampshire, in Wyndham, New Hampshire. Yes. Uh, yes. Oh, it was today. that hot in New Hampshire? Damn. Yep. Well, climate change. No climate change. I'm just uh, a little concerned about my indictments. <laughs> and in the morning consult that just came out, I wanted to see, because, you know, every time you get indicted, I like to check the polls. because <laughs> One more indictment that I think this election's over. <laughs> One more. I think he's going to get his wish. No, it's horrible. You get indicted for nothing. Can you imagine a guy? Let's indict my opponent. This, uh, this is a sick, this is a third, this becomes a third world country. The latest morning console poll has us far ahead. We're at 59% and the others are at like 12. One is at 12. I think that's the sanctimonious, but he's rapidly being caught by Ramishwamy. Who's good? Who's good? <laughs> <laughs> that's why I like that one because that's the yeah. one guy that is not really going to be critical of him right he has nothing to lose he's just in it to sell a book and a bunch of truth hats um, and maybe he'll get transportation secretary at some point and we'll get to hear some like tra train raps yeah who's good I take yeah. the I take the general like uh, caution against indicting uh, political people uh, you know I think that's something to bear in mind I think Trump being so conscious about it may maybe seem like he's using it as a tool he's but, saying he's going to go after Biden well, if once he gets elected. He ran in 2016 <laughs> saying, lock her up. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And even at this rally, he, he said, I have to change. Like, it's she's no longer crooked Hillary because that's Biden. It's beautiful Hillary. She's so beautiful. He kept saying. He's going to lose votes if he keeps saying <laughs> Yeah, right? Um, here is uh, Trump uh, addressing um, Chris Christie. Oh, yeah. Um, who apparently he's mad at now. With I mean, policy. Look, let me just say this. Chris Christie's horrible. And, um, uh, you know, I don't know if I, I saw some rumors that maybe that the, the Democrats are like, uh, you know, uh, helping his uh, campaign so that he'll be on the stage. Would to, not be shocked. And um, I am all in favor of promoting the most beatable candidate in a race. Sometimes you can't assess who the most beatable candidate is. But in other instances, it's quite obvious, right? Like, I mean, the, there was a couple of races in the 2022 cycle where it was quite obvious. Doug Mastriano Park, no. is yeah. worse than uh, any other candidate in that um, in that uh, Senate race against uh, uh, oh, no, Mastriano Governor's, against Shapiro. Governor's race against um, Pennsylvania. And uh, that is that makes sense to for the Democrats to write, you know, and it worked. Most concerned. Oh, and it worked in every everywhere everywhere they tried. It. Yeah. Uh, it's failed in the past. You got to make a good choice and assessment, but the strategy itself makes sense. But the idea that funding the Christie campaign is going to in some way like hurt Donald Trump in the primary is just, I'm sorry, nobody cares about Chris Christie. Nobody. Yeah. You've already, you've already won over Scarborough. You don't need to fund Chris Christie's stupid ass campaign. And all those people are already voting Democrat anyway. Chris Christie is a blue state Republican. And so he appeals to like conservative Democrats or independents or whatever. And none of those people are voting in Iowa and New Hampshire in the Republican primary. Who's good? No, oh, no, Christie's he's eating right now. He can't Thanks be voting. <laughs> Sir, please do not call him a fat pig. That's very disrespectful. Don't call him. See, I'm, I'm trying to be nice. Don't call him a fat pig. You can't do it. You can't do that. So now, because you're not allowed to do that, and therefore uh, we're not going to do it, okay? We want to be very civil, right? So, the ladies... There he is. Doing the, some people would say that he's a fat pig, but I would never say that. He's good at that. I mean, it's his 2015. He's playing there, all the hits yeah. again. And I mean, just <laughs> lastly, uh, let's just do the, uh, you know, he's, he's building in the critique here 
Um, of the venue. The uh, of the venue. Here, uh, let's just play this. And uh, and by the way, I want to say officially for the press, it's about 110 degrees in this room. Nice job with the air conditioning, whoever. But but you know what the press will say? You know what the, they'll say? Trump didn't look well. He was extremely wet. It's 104 or five degrees in this room, but we're okay with it, right? Take it off. I mean, uh, the guy is campaigning well. He's going to be. Can- he's going to be. He- he's going to d- just wipe the floor with all the ch- uh, other uh, Republican nominees. Uh, the real question is: is that when it comes time to run in the general election? And let's just for the moment, you know, put aside the question of of Biden's sort of like campaign competency or not. Um, He's going to have a real problem because there is not going to be uh, he may get he may add dollars and points within the Republican uh, primary. Every time he gets indicted. But. In the general election, it's going to hurt him. Mm-hmm. And the, just the question is going to just going to be, you know, how much is it going to hurt him? Um, but contrast that clip to what we played yesterday with DeSantis saying, you know, when I went to San Francisco, I saw someone defecating in the street. I mean, and into a to a room of just like, you know, half clapping people in Iowa. It just, and Trump's like, you know, thanks for coming from, to Florida from Florida to tell us that. Right. It's just, it's just it, it, the 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 energy is so different. And I, 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 since you brought that op-ed up to me, I, I keep returning to it honestly. Just like the fact that the, these Trump rallies, it's old school politics in certain ways where people go there and they feel like they're a part of, they're having fun. They're having and, fun and they feel like they're connecting with other MAGA people. It's insidious. Um, but like there is that communal element. It, it's p- feeling like you're a part of something greater. That's what that's what energizes a base. Yeah. Well, the other interesting thing, too, is that, again, though, it's like so devoid of. Of like really any policy prescriptions or even positions on stuff. And increasingly, I think what's happening with the Republican Party is, you know, 15, 20 years ago, you hear people say, like, I'm I'm socially liberal, but I'm, uh, you know, fiscally conservative. (laughs) But they have no fiscal conservative policies outside of tax cuts for really wealthy people. And uh, Trump will ultimately move in that direction, um, you know, once we get into the general election. But largely they've been running and we see it in ohio you've got you've got the ohio secretary of state running against sherrod brown in 2024 saying we need to pass this um this obstacle to amending the constitution because they're going to come in here and want to raise the minimum wage Mm -hmm. this is a very odd pitch in ohio it seems to me um but we'll see. But certainly, you know, this is, we're going to get more of this uh, from Trump, at least during the, yeah. the primary. And again, I will remind you, he needs to win this election to stay out of jail. Yeah. This is an existential election for him. So we've already seen it happening. On Friday, he's going to go in front of this judge who's going to um, uh, talk about the protective order, basically saying that you cannot open source or you can open source your defense and put all of this evidence out there uh, that the government is bringing to, uh, to prosecute you with. Um, Trump wants to release that evidence because it is part of his campaign. There is the, the defense strategy that he has, the legal defense strategy he has, and the campaign strategy he has are melded they're the same thing the only way he gets off on these things i believe he believes 
and I think with good reason, is by becoming president. A hundred percent. And so they're already beginning to demonize the judge and the jurors in Washington, D.C., for essentially, they're not quite there yet. They're not explicit about it. They may never be explicit about it other than to sort of like, it's decrepit, they're horrible, they're uh, uncivil, they're not bright, whatever it is he's going to start to say. Uh, they are trying to basically say this is uh, racially motivated. That's where, that's where they're going with this.